via LinkedIn group, right? The way yeah. group. Fantastic. So yeah. uh, most people end up there. You know, we can um, talk to you to other speakers as well. And it's a kind of a safe place for this kind of discussion. So thank okay. you so much. Thank for you joining so much. Us. Real pleasure. Hello, Mr. Two billion. I thought it would be three billion with inflation going on these days. Uh, would it, there was probably will be three billion because kids are growing faster than old people. Or it should be um, eight, eight billion, right? Because uh, we all have a kid inside. You could look at it like that way. The trouble with this is that those the two billion kids don't get treated as well as they should, and that's yeah. really why why I'm here. We have a group of I I don't know who's listening. It's very hard to do this because you don't know who's listening. But I think of kids as people between the age of zero and 20. And in lots of the world, we don't treat them well, especially if they're not in the elite or they're not leaders or they're not from a, the right family. Uh, and we need to do that better. We need to show kids more respect. We need to appreciate them more. We need to uh, have more uh, understanding of what they can do. So I, what I'd like to do, hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here. It was really uh, very interesting for me to hear Richard uh, because I, we share a lot of things in common, even though I'm a lot older than he is. Um, maybe I have some wisdom and maybe I don't, but if I do, I'd love to give it to you, whatever I have, but I can't take it with me. So the, I'd like to spend a few minutes sharing a PowerPoint with you that uh, explains what I'm doing and shows some of the things that I've put together. And then I'd like to spend the rest of the time having a, a short conversation and hearing your reactions. And I've got some questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, is that okay, Marcel? That's great. And I just want to do a quick introduction. To the okay, fact that, then uh, you can do that. <laughs> a good common friend, uh, Robert Levin, introduced uh, Mark uh, to me recently and Mark very graciously accepted to come and uh, give us his talk. And he's been doing so much amazing work for so long. It's really hard to describe. So I'm sure he's going to be covering some of those points. Uh, he came up with the expression, the digital natives. So it's in the Oxford uh, Dictionary and a whole bunch of other places. So he's been working uh, in the sector for a very long time. And uh, what can I say? He's an overachieving overachiever. So uh, no, thanks again for coming, Mark. And uh, back to you. And you know, the interesting thing, thank you, Marcelo. It was really terrific to meet you. Uh, very recently. The interesting thing about overachievers is they often think of themselves as underachievers because a lot of people think about, well, if, if I could realize everything that I've ever thought of that's on my plate, uh, like, like Richard just talked about the game that is on his back burner. If we could realize everything on our back burners, we would be so incredibly productive. And we need to figure out, I think, better ways to do that. So I'm going to uh, share this screen if I if, if it works. Let's see, it says share, and then I'm going to go like this. Um, I have to go here and like this. Everybody see that? Do you see that, uh, Marcelo? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I've recently started something called the Two Billion Kids Project. I'll explain a little bit what it is. Uh, it's basically about empowering all the kids in the world and it's a global alliance. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and I'll talk a little bit about the first product, if you wanna call it that, that we produced, which is this little ebook called Beliefs and I'd love your help with all of that. So this is really about getting your help um, if anybody wants to be part of this. That's why I'm here, that's why I'm thrilled to be here and I love talking with young people as much as I can. So please contact me. Uh, I will give you my email. It's Mark Prensky, M-A-R-C-P-R-E-N-S-K-Y at gmail.com. And I always love to hear from people. So there are 2 billion kids in the world, the roughly, that's a, that's a rough number, um, unless you include Mar uh, Marcelo's Everybody's a Kid, which I like. Uh, there are, but they all need help. When you're young, you need help in growing up to become what we hope you'll become, which is a good, effective, world-improving person in the 20th century. We only have a relatively small amount of time on the planet, and we want to be as good and effective and world-improving, I think, most of us at least, as possible. 
Now that used to come, that help in growing up used to come from our adults through things like parenting and school. And that was fine in the past in many ways because the world was the same uh, more or less and your the adults really had wisdom and interesting things and ways to help you grow up uh, the trouble is that the adults of today all of us whether we're old like me or younger like marcello uh, were all raised and born and raised in the 20th century and that was a different time with different beliefs and many of the adults today still hold those beliefs and they're changing and they're changing with regard to many, many things. And this is a, a really important list that I've put together with anthropologists and stuff, but we all know about different technology attitudes, but privacy, property, personal relationships, uh, LBGTQ, security, sexuality, race, pow, all these things are changing. We view time and space differently now that we're connected. So that's a huge change between the previous generation and this generation, and we are the first internet generation. It's the kids who are the internet generation because I grew up without it, but anybody born in the 21st century grew up with an internet and knew that they were connected in some way or could be connected or had the possibility of being connected to kids all over the world. That didn't exist in the world before. I call the adults of today the world's last pre-internet generation. And that's, that's who we are. We can't do anything about it, except that some of us can understand this. And some of us adults perceive this. And so we work with kids in new ways, outside for the most part of what we call education, because education is a very pre-internet thing. It's a very, 20th century artifact. It worked back then. It was great. But you take a person like Marcello, who is now, he was born in the 20th century, but he thinks differently and he perceives it. And so he's starting things like Way. And one of the biggest ones that I work with that I think is phenomenal, it's in 60 countries now, is called Design for Change. And it's got adults in it, of course, but it's really, really about empowering kids. And so check it out. It probably exists in whatever country you're in. Now, the problem that I see with this, that I've perceived as I looked at this around the world, is that all these different groups that are working to empower kids in different ways, whether it's Way or whether it's Design for Change or whether it's many other groups, they are all in separate silos. So we have a group of people here who have formed around Marcelo and his ideas, uh, which is terrific. But you may not have even heard of Design for Change or heard of many other organizations that are doing similar things. And it's worse because those brands compete. So if, if uh, Facebook starts a, a project for kids, then uh, Microsoft doesn't want to be part of it or Google doesn't want to be part of it. Everybody wants their own brand. The world is full of brands. And if I can add egos and everybody is looking to put themselves as the top. And that is a real, real problem because they can't connect. And sometimes they don't even know about each other. So I want to be what we want to be is a meta movement. We want to be in this, I got this term actually from Marcelo the other day who, who used it. I, I hadn't used it before, but it's a great term. We want to help everybody move ahead. That's really our goal. We don't want to be just another brand or another program or all this. That's, there's so many of those and they're all so good like yours, but we want to support them all. We want to say, hey, kids today are different. There's another way to look at them. There's another thing. There's another set of things that they are able and capable of doing. And that's what we support. So if you're a parent, you can send your kid to education, which is kind of a, a 20th century thing, the way we conceive of it today. Or you can move them into the future by joining these other kinds of organizations that we support. All the individual brands will remain. We, we, they're fine and we're gonna support all of them. 
but the ones we support, when I say all of them, I mean the brands or the organizations that support essentially what I call three core goals. And the first one is kids should be empowered, that we're not into putting kids down like school often does. We are into making kids more powerful. And so you see people like, like Greta Thunberg rising up and what can we do to help her? What could we do to amplify, to make that idea of what she can now do and what kids can now do? How can we make that more powerful? Uh, the second way is that the, the way that I have seen this work the best is through accomplishment of real world projects by kids. And I know you do some of that and I hope you do more of that and Design for Change certainly does a lot of that, but many organizations do it. For some kids, it's the, it's the science fair competitions. For other kids, it's really going out into their neighborhoods and fixing things. But if you're not doing stuff in the real world, if all you're doing is thinking, then you're not doing what you could do in this day and age, because as a young person, you are so empowered with new tools. And I like to say that in the, in the 20th century, if you wanted to do a survey, you'd have to do it by hand and you could survey your school or a couple of hundred people at most. Now today, if you want to do a survey for any reason, you go to SurveyMonkey and you can survey easily a million people. So this is the kind of broadening of our powers as young people that we now have in our hands. And my, one of my goals is to help people really understand this power and how to use it. And that's probably a big part of what Mar Marcelo thinks of his wisdom and hopefully what you do. And the third part is that we're not just doing this for ourselves. We're doing this to improve our world, to make a better world. I distinguish between achievement which is great, you climbed the highest mountain, great, you got a PhD, great, you published an article, but the accomplishment is the fact that you've helped other people with it. So it's great that you've put this uh, organization together and, and it's, it's an achievement that say Marcelo can say, I started way, but the accomplishment is the fact is all of you is all the people who are part of it, who are listening, who are now changed because of what Marcelo has done. And we need better language to talk about this. We don't have a good common language. I learned this from, believe it or not, the politicians in my country, the US, where the, uh, there was a Republican party and a Democratic party. And then the Republicans at one point said, we're not gonna call it the Democratic Party, because that sounds too good. We're going to call it the Democrat Party. And they literally had a campaign. And now if you listen to any of those guys, they don't say, uh, you know, Democratic Party, they say Democrats. They say Democrat Party. And that was a big change in language. So I see language, words like empowerment, words like accomplishment, words like becoming, Words like I can, we can, which these come from Design for Change, or they have a methodology called FIDS for Kids, or the question, why are we doing this? To what end? Or getting things done. I talk about real world impacting projects, not PBL, which is just another methodology for teaching the old stuff. And I, we need new metrics, like measurable positive impact is one that's a possibility. We need to adopt these, some of these words, a few of them universally, so that people know that we are talking about something different than the old education. The fact that education used to be so important and helped the world, and it still is important, but that concept is really a 21st century concept. The 20, the tw that's, that concept is really a 20th century concept. The 21st century concept is empowerment. So it's not that education will change the world, even though a lot of people have said that, it's that empowerment will change the world. And education is a piece of empowerment, but it's really that you need to exercise that power. And so what we wanna do is provide some clear empowering messages to all 2 billion kids in the world. And I, I, it suddenly occurred to me that we don't wanna leave anybody out. 
that we, it's very easy to unite uh, kids who are, who are at the top of whatever it is, whether it's intellectual world or artistic world or anything. Those kids, you can find them or the leadership world, you can find them and unite them. But that leaves out a lot of the people in the world who really have individual skills that they don't know about. So the first, the last thing that I want to share with you is this online book that we put together. And it's, when I say it's a book, it's an ebook in progress. This is version one. So I'm going to look for every piece of feedback that you have uh, to make it better. It will be translated into many languages. The language may not be right. The, the kinds of words we're using may not be right for everybody. But hopefully this is a kind of message. It's got 20 pages. There's 20 pieces of it that can reach every kid in the world that I think is really important for them to understand for the 21st century. And it's available if you want to get it, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash two, capital A, capital G, capital R, two, capital U, small k. If you want to write that down, we'll share that with you. So here it is. It's called Beliefs for 21st Century Kids, Thoughts for Kids to Memorize and Live By. Because when you memorize something, at least you can go back and think about it. Here it is. Congratulations on being born in the 21st century. I have a unique set of dreams, passions, strengths, and capabilities that no other human has. So this was created by our, our little foundation, the Global Future Education Foundation. And it grew out of a, a long held belief that we don't really tell the kids the things they most need to know. And the vision is to put this everywhere. It doesn't have to be a book, it can be a print book, it can be word of mouth, it can be a poem, it can be a rap song, it can be anything that somebody wants to make it, but we want to deliver this message to everybody. So we would love for kids of all ages to be part of this project or to run the project eventually because it, it's for their benefit. And one of the things that we don't necessarily need too much more of is adults telling the kids what to do or how to run or how to make it. And so I love the game where, uh, where Richard was showing other kids how to uh, be an entrepreneur. Those are the kinds of things we need to do. We want your and adults participation partnership. If you want to be part of it, 
there's always work for people to do. Let's go back on here. Uh, we're looking for kids who want to be empowered. That's really, and, and who want to empower other kids. So it's not just about the accomplishment, it's about the, it's, it's not just about the achievement, it's about the accomplishment, it's about helping other people. And we care, we want adults who care about that and people like Marcelo, which is why I was so thrilled to meet Marcelo. We, we talked for two or three hours when we first met and we think a lot in common. So that's really terrific. We need more people like that who know how to help kids turn dreams into reality, who, who have done this before. And we hold contests, and if you have better ideas, and if you have ideas for improving the book or anything else, or our message, or, or the whole concept, we want to hear it. We'll, we'll figure out how to give people prizes if they have good ideas, because I think good ideas are really, really valuable, and we don't want to take them lightly. So please join us. That's really what we want to do. And these are my questions. Given that every kid in culture is unique, and I'm a big fan of uniqueness, I think that's what we're gonna need in the future as machines take over more and more of the repetitive tasks. Is it a good idea? I want your opinion on this. Is the idea that we have of trying to reach all two billion kids with some common messages, like you're a citizen of the world. Is that a good idea, in your opinion? Not that we only have to do that, and we can have lots of things that are local, and lots of things that are in subgroups, but are there messages that should be given to every kid in the world for them to internalize? And if there are, what should those messages be, and how do we get them out there? Those are my questions to you. It was just a pleasure to get to talk to this group. I heard a few of you talk uh, in, in a chat session, and I've heard a couple of the presentations. So if this is a group I am absolutely thrilled to be part of. Let me know how I can help. Thank you. It's really great, Mark. I hadn't seen the presentation. We just uh, talked about some of the key points. So thank you so much for sharing. And uh, we, we do have some pretty special kids here in the group. I'm sure they have very good questions. I'd just like to make a comment because one of the advantages of being a man is that uh, it's okay to tell all of you that Mark is 75 years old. I, I could not believe it when I first heard. I guess you guys can believe either. And as a 75 year old, I meaning he's so connected with the generation uh, Z slash Z, depending on what, which country we're in. Um, and um, I think that this is a great opportunity to talk to someone who's been uh, caring and worrying about the future of children for a very, very long time, several decades, in fact. So please uh, keep, I uh, hope you kept your best questions for last. Uh, this is a final session today. And uh, far away, you know, Mark is here to. Uh, uh, field those questions and uh, maybe he'll have some questions um, for you as well on top of the ones you just read out. So, usually Giordano to have good questions. So there, Giordano. I am, One. I am analyzing what he just said. It's, it's a lot of things and I'm, I'm thinking about it. You know, that's great, because that's the reaction that I get often to what I say. I, I bring different perspectives than other people bring. And I, what I really do want you to do is just what you said. Think about some of these things. Do they make sense to you? If you have questions about them, you can write me. And I am happy to continue the dialogue both in the, in the WhatsApp uh, group and, and individually with any of you. Uh, it's, it's a different perspective to see the adults of the world as the last pre-internet generation. It's a different perspective to see young people as the first connected generation the world has ever had. It's really, a lot of these things are different. It's really a different perspective for most adults to see kids as being empowered and often sometimes having more power than the adults have because they have better tools. 
and they know how to use them more effectively. So yes, yes it's a it's a dramatic change in how uh, kids kids grow in the in the reality. Uh, yes, Mark, I, I have a question for you. Uh, Marcelo said that you are working for more than more than ten years in empowering kids and etc. And before the the twenty first century, what what you we're doing and for empowering the kids? Well, I was learning to uh, do a lot of things. First, empower myself. Uh, because I think uh, Richard put it very nicely in the last session about how a lot of what we have to do is find out about ourselves in order to help others. And so one of my sub projects, which I don't know whether I'll get to, but it's very important, is to increase self-knowledge in kids. So is there something you can do every year on your birthday, for example, a little play, a little game that will give you suggestions, given who you are, you might want to look at this. In my case, it was research and development. Nobody had ever said that to me before I was age 30. So the, what happened for me, I've always loved kids and I've been a teacher and I've been a teacher at all levels. But what specifically happened for me was that I, had a company where I employed a lot of people who were quite a bit younger than me, who were the early adapters in this new generation. And I saw that they behaved in different ways. So when I had a question, I would call up people that I thought were smart. When they had a question, they would post it on a bulletin board and get many more answers much more quickly. And that's where I came up 20 years ago with this idea of that there were people who were native to the digital world. And there are people like me who came to it later. And that's, that's not a reflection on good or bad. It's just a fact. And what happens is that what I now think is that the attitudes of the generations in many ways are different in general. Now, that doesn't mean everybody and Marcelo and I may have different attitudes, but, but in general, if you look at the world today, adults think privacy is so enormously important. Adults think, and, and young people, a lot of young people have a different attitude to that. Or adults had one thing about the LBGTQ and we saw how quickly that changed in the US, for example or now we're struggling with race issues and the attitudes of between the generations uh, may be very different. And so even education, I think, the attitude that, the, that most adults have to education is something that's left over from the 20th century and before. That if you just know enough stuff, that if you just learn enough stuff, you'll get the wisdom that Marcelo talks about. But that's not true. It turns out you have to know some stuff, but basically you have to do a lot of things. You have to do the projects. You have to accomplish things. You have to help other people. And that will really be the kind of bringing up you need. So I am, I am now part of the post-education thinkers. I am really saying what comes after that that will help this generation more than just the kind of education that we offered in the past. Um, uh, I see Mark. Thank you. And who is who asked that question? I'd love to know who it is. And from where? Jordana's from Brazil. Is uh, 13 years old. Oh, cool. oh yes. Okay. I, I thought you were asking Alexi. Uh, no, I have a question. So you said that that two billion kids in the world, like were um, like for the 2 billion kids project, it's something about 2 billion kids being like homeless or, or um, like disadvantaged compared to others. What no. was it? No? It's okay. It, it, okay. That's a great question. And, uh, and uh, it's really good of you to make me clarify. There are, there exist roughly 2 billion people in the world who are under the age of 20. 
Okay. So it's that's just all, that's all I'm saying. Okay. So it's not like it's just kids in general. It, it's kids in general. Some of them are advantaged. Some of them are disadvantaged. Uh, some of them, uh, they some they all live in different cultures and countries. But I have not seen anybody who considered them as a whole new cohort, as a group of kids, a group of people, humans, who were born in a different time and have access to, although they don't all have it yet, very, very different technology and very different thought patterns. And I want to figure out ways to reach all of them at a fundamental level. Okay. Yes, I, so hope just that, I hope that helps and, and that you find that an interesting thing to do. Mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. So as a follow-up to that, uh, there are around 720 million uh, teenagers you know, between 13 and 17 in the world. So what we're doing uh, for that group, Mark is trying to include that group and you know, have... Uh, another uh, 1.4 uh, billion on top of that getting to the 2 billion. So we are more focused on the teenager years because my personal opinion is that this is when your brain is developed enough, you have enough experience and everything else that uh, would allow you to do amazing things. And if you look back in history, I mean, Alexander the Great had Aristotle as his uh, professor, uh, as a mentor, teacher, whatever you want to call it back then, and he uh, achieved great things, but not only. Uh, he had Joan Dark uh, managed to lead an army, and there are lots of examples of teenagers uh, several centuries ago that uh, when they were between 13 and 17, they did absolutely fantastic things. Today, school makes that really hard because all of a sudden you have to fit in a mold. And what you're trying to do here is not to fight the existing system, it's just to say, hey, there's something else out there, right? So the uh, a uh, metaphor that I use quite often saying, it's like you go to a buffet restaurant and you can taste a little bit of everything. And it doesn't mean that you need to eat from the ready-made plate. Uh, you can just pick as much as you want from any of the plates. So if you're a big ketchup person, I just posted in the Way LinkedIn uh, group, uh, the history of ketchup. So if you want to know where ketchup comes from, that's where it comes from. And this is kind of a little taste, not necessarily of ketchup, but taste of history, taste of agriculture and trade in the old years. And the fact that uh, those uh, tomatoes uh, were not um, available originally uh, in Italy. So now when you think about a tomato, you think quite often of Italy. Tomatoes did not exist in Italy until you know, quite recently. And um, you learning through a single word, ketchup, which you all know, and you probably eat that every day in some cases, you're going much, much deeper, right? So if this is the profession, the purpose, the interest that you have that um, triggers something like this fire inside and uh, you feel like you should go deeper into your own knowledge, the Wisdom Accelerator community is there to support it, right? If you say you like particle physics, let's try to find the job at CERN in Geneva so you can work at the particle accelerator um, a facility for at least one week. And then you figure out if this is really for you, right? So- And I would add, if I, can, if I can just break in for a second, I think you're getting to the point. It's for me, it's about not just the fact that you're interested in something, it's to what end? It's how are you going to apply it to make a better world? Because we can all be, some of us are more curious, some of us are less curious. You and me, Marcelo, are, are intensely curious people, and we care about the history of ketchup just because we've heard of ketchup. But other people don't. And, but everybody, every single kid in the world has something to contribute, has something that they can add positively to the world. And our job is to help them figure out what it is. So to your metaphor of the, of the buffet, I think that's great. But if you suddenly, the, if the first time you ever see a buffet is when you're a teenager, that's not enough. What we need to do is start really early so that kids understand all their life that they have these opportunities, that they have this. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do it, but somebody needs to do that 
so that when the kids reach teenagerhood and every kid is concerned about his or her, him or herself, then they already have a base of ways to approach the world in terms of the buffet that, that they didn't have before. And you can build on that. And when they leave teenagership and they go into colleges and work, they can build even more on that. And that's what's emerging in the world. That idea of, of empowering everybody starting really at the beginning. And then there will be specialists like you in the teen years, and there'll be specialists in the preschool years, and there'll be specialists in the elementary school years and, and high school years or whatever. That's what I want to unite. All of the people who are thinking about empowering kids across the whole age spectrum in all these different ways. That's our goal. There you go. Mark. Questions? Such an amazing goal. As you, as you speak, I, I can understand the, how holistic you, you are on, on all the, all the spectrum of kids and working on every single, every single wage to, to improve the, the empowerment. I, I am amazed by, by your, your goals and your beliefs. Thank you. It's a big vision, but it's a doable vision. And it's, and the reason I know it's a doable vision is that I come across in the world, people like Marcelo. I come across people who are working with, with really young kids on empowering them at very early ages. And I look for how do they do this? And they do it through real world projects. And if you want to know how they do it with little kids, Design for Change is a great source for that. If you want to know how we can do it with teenagers, Marcelo is a great source of that. And there are other things. I just worked with somebody called Teen Force. And, and there are other people who want to focus that way. If you want to know how we do it with, with older kids, college kids, university kids, there are great examples of that. Not that many, but they're all starting up, whether it's Ecole Calendu in France or whether it's um, Minerva University in the US. There are lots. Of, so this is happening. That's what is, excites me. I'm not inventing it. I'm curating it. I'm trying to put it together and so that other people can expand, can understand it and take advantage of it. That's really my goal. I, I'm not here to build a particular route for kids. I'm here to say the, the main path that you're taking needs to be different in the 21st century. It's not the education path of the 20th century. Not that education is bad, but the path, the way education evolved in the 20th century was helpful then, but not now. And that's just what Marcelo said. It takes away things that we really need in our kids in the 21st century. Uh, and so we need another way and I call it empowerment. I call it empowerment. And even if people, people all have different names. So that's why I want to pull us together to at least share some common language. But when I say 2 billion kids, nobody can argue with that. It's not anybody's language. It's a fact. There are 2 billion kids. There might be more in the future, there might. but, but that's, so hopefully that will unite all of us who want to help kids in this new world. Great, Mark. I'll have um, not quite a question, but a request for a definition. Uh, how would you define ageism? Ageism is, is hugely important. It's, um, and it goes along with lookism and it goes along with it, it's judging a person because, uh, and making assumptions about a person because of their age. So uh, somebody could say, Mark is 75 years old, actually 74, but, but Mark is 74 years old. He's not, he doesn't understand us. That's, that's ageism. Or somebody could say, you know, 
Marcelo is however old you are, Marcelo, I don't actually know. And he doesn't understand us. That would be ageism, but he does. So you've got to look beyond that. And the same, it's the same exact thing with lookism uh, that's so um, important in the world. And the, the internet actually did a lot, I think, in my opinion, to reduce lookism and ageism. Because if we didn't have our pictures here, you wouldn't know who we are or how old we are. And, and uh, if Marcelo hadn't told you, which I'm happy he did, I, I have no problem with that, you might not have known how old I was. And so it's very interesting. And one of the reasons it's, I love this stuff is that my son is 60 years younger than me. I have a son, Sky, and he is 15 years old. And so it's very, we skipped a generation essentially. And it's very interesting to see his perspectives and his point of view and how he sees the world. And that's, I, I love that kind of thing. And I, I love dialoguing about it. I don't have all the answers or any of the answers maybe, but I'm very interested in the problem. I, I'm turning 50 this year, by the way. So and, uh, I'm told that I look younger than my years. And, um, but that's not what's important. What's important is that you act in a particular way. That how you look is lookism, right? But the way you act and the way you interact is what really counts. Well, it's basically uh, the way you shape, uh, which can be translated as the way you act. Like you're a vessel and you're filling up with all those experiences over the years, right? So Mark has 50% more experienced, so you could say that he had 50% longer to fill his vessel of knowledge. And the way he's shaping this knowledge and the way that he's expressing it to the world, he can be very constrained. I mean, some people, when they, once they get to the older years, they just don't care about the world that much, right? So they don't want to give back anymore because they reach a, a point of being tired. And uh, we're, both of us, I dare to say, uh, very open to the world and saying, look, well, I am a full vessel willing to share my learnings and um, whoever is interested in this kind of learnings, uh, please come over here and uh, we can have this kind of dialogue. So it's very dialectical, so it's made with dialogues and this is the structure of the Wisdom Accelerator program. <clears throat> and Let me, um, that, that's, a, that's a great metaphor. I mean, the, it's great to use metaphors the metaphor of we are a vessel that fills up is one of the metaphors that really hurt education. Because that's, if that's the, your metaphor, people just take courses and they put people, they pour things into your head. That's what happens in my son's school, which is why he hates it. What really is true is that we are all processing machines. We are all computers. So what we get is inputs. And then in our each individual brain, we do something with those inputs and that shapes our wisdom and that shapes who we are. And so we always, it, it's good if you and I are people who are always seeking more inputs into our computer and then we can change and I can say, ah, you told me that, that really changes now how I think about all these things like the young man who asked the question. That's what's really important. We're not vessels, we are processors. We are active machines who do this. And the thing that is different in the 21st century is that we used to be individual processors. We used to think on our own and we would write books and there are plenty, you know, millions of books that individuals thought. Now we are connected processors and we're just at the very, very, very beginning of that. In the past, you needed a professor to connect all the different books and the thoughts in the different books. That's what school, a lot of college was about, or high school or any school. But now it's happening because of the technology. So if you believe Ray Kurzweil, we'll all be connected in the cloud in 20 years. But however it happens, that's, we have that today. We, what you've just done here, Marcelo, with Way, is that suddenly all these individual thinkers around the world are connected and we're sharing ideas. And so I, from, for me, I would not think of ourselves as vessels at all. 
I would think of ourselves as 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 analytical machines and 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 uh, emotional machines because we're both receiving input and then producing hopefully better things for the world. Yeah, let, let me qualify the statement because it was uh, unclear. So my a way of thinking is that there's a a sequence of processing. Again, the machine is required. You start with data, just zeros and ones and uh, sounds and uh, you know, visual stimuli. The data becomes information once you can interpret this information and you can give it some meaning. The uh, information then becomes knowledge when it's structured in a way that they just fits into a silent. This is what schools do all the time. They're filling the vessel with the, the third refined or the second refinement from data to information and to knowledge and that's what they try to fill it with at school but from knowledge there is another step which is insight is when you go like i've seen this happening enough times to present a pattern i believe that this is going to be uh, always following uh, the same kind of um, a path if i have those elements in this context uh, and that's my insight it's, it's what you get uh, developed as instincts. And after you have this refinement into insights, there is a final step which you could claim that is a refinement into wisdom. So the vessel that I'm referring to is a vessel full of pearls, pearls of wisdom which have been distilled so many times from data to information to insight, not to knowledge, and then to insight and then to wisdom. And these pearls of wisdom. Uh, it, it sounds a little bit daft to claim that we're both vessels full of pearls, but you know, uh, my apologies if uh, that's offensive somehow. But it, we just spend so much time and effort doing the distillation process. We're trying to share with you. These are some pearls we have to share. Take them if you wish. So here's what, here's what I, 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 I've heard that, that that hierarchy has existed for a long time and a lot of people um, uh, think it's right. And I'm not sure, I, I, I actually am agnostic on that. But if you think about the pearls at the top, what's very interesting to me is that for, for centuries, for millennia, those pearls, once they hit there, were, you could pass them down. They were, they were the wisdom that humans had because they all worked in the environment that we had, that humans lived in, that really didn't change very much. It improved a little bit, it got more sophisticated, but it was the same. I think we're moving into a time where those pearls are gonna change, where, where what we used to think of as wisdom, whether you're talking about the Dalai Lama or whether you're talking about Socrates or whether you're talking about Aristotle or whether you're talking about Alexander the Great, their wisdom may have been wisdom in a different world. And that's something that I, that's what I am interested in thinking about, is that what is the wisdom? And I wrote a book called um, uh, Brain Gain, which was finding digital wisdom. What is wisdom in a digital world? And it may be very different than what wisdom was in a pre-digital world. That's why there's a huge difference between the last pre-internet generation and the first internet generation. And one of the things that may be changing as much as anything else, is wisdom. And so I suggest that we all think about that. Yeah, so lots of perspectives. I hope you uh, enjoy Mark's presentation. Do you have any additional questions? I don't know if Michael is still here, if you'd like to uh, have a question as well. I'm not sure he had a, an issue with connection. Flipped yes, actually, I'm still here and there's a lot of things to talk about, but I think I will get in touch with Mark on another opportunity talking. Uh, we are connected in the chat and I will connect him as well. Actually, I don't share totally all your perspectives, neither one you have, Mark, nor you one you have, Marcella, but I think that's the best way to get in touch and to discuss about things and to shape our concepts, mine and yours. Um, yeah, well, and I think now it's, for me, it's also late, so I don't want to start this connect the, the discussion right now. I will, first of all, talk with you two and then of course later with the whole community and I think there is for all of us a lot to learn and that's the amazing thing about it and it never stops. So I think with that word I can go back without any question and with a, with a big interest to continue discussion with all of you. Thank you all.
like the goddess Fortuna with a cornucopia that uh, keeps on giving. So uh, thank you very much for joining, Mark. And uh, guys, if you still want to play, we can keep the session on. I don't know who's going to be running it because in Santa Barbara, they uh, decided to get some uh, sports. And I suggest that you also get some uh, fresh air if you can. Um, would you like to have a game now, Giordano, Mark? Uh, what do you say? I, I have to go do my taxi. Oh, wow. That, that, that's not a fun game. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for uh, joining, Mark, and uh, I hope you'll be able to catch up in person uh, very soon. We will, we will do our best, and I'd love to get the, the videos of the whole, the whole thing because uh, I, I'm sure I missed some wonderful people.